Greetings and salutations, you beautiful individuals of this beautiful planet. Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties for a little post-weekend LCS and LEC power rankings. Again, back to the OG format, 8-1 to one and 10-1 to one and... Obviously, we're wrapping up the round robin and wrapping up the season for some of these LEC squads. But because the LCS wasn't actually on the weekend, already feels like it's been so long ago. To, so to keep our memories fresh, we'll start in North America. It, it's so weird how it works like that. Just a simple one, two day change for the LCS. And again, change to something that was somewhat familiar going back to a Thursday, Friday type of schedule feels like forever ago in the world of how things work in time. And here we are, time to talk about the LCS and what we saw that weekend, because what we saw was actually pretty decent from some of the top level teams in the LCS and kind of sorting out that middle field, that middle tier as well for where the playoff positions could be is the action that we had from the LCS. And all seems to be returning to normal because we have the Shopify Rebellion and Immortals hanging out towards that bottom table. Obviously, Shopify, not much positive to talk about as they got completely gapped again. And it's looking more and more like that dominant Immortals win was because Shopify is just that bad so far here in summer because it was NRG getting off the schneid and getting their first win against IMT and that head-to-head. -head. But... I'm not feeling that much more confident about NRG. They still look hesitant. They still look not fully on the same page, even against a bottom feeder like IMT. At least there's the familiarity in the LCS to identify Shopify Rebellion at the bottom as, as the deep end of the pool, that bottom end that you've got to get and how far you can sink down. Then you throw in Immortals, as you mentioned, not having that win against as Shopify Rebellion and then not looking as impressive since then they fall through. I think I've still, Got that hope. I mean, Shopify Rebellion, I don't think there's any hope anyone is looking at with that team bouncing back at this point, this split. For Immortals, I still am holding out, still clinging to maybe one ticket, one share of that team's hype and what they could do. And NRG, you've still got some people holding on to that hope after all that they've seen throughout this year. And maybe a little bit of a reward starting to brew up for them, getting a little bit more traction, a little bit more momentum, getting that win on the board. It's, I mean, they had to get some type of momentum because otherwise we were going right into the ditch and not believing uh, in them at all. And listen, they've got Shopify next on the docket for NRG. So that momentum should carry. Otherwise, if they drop that one, then you're back to feeling absolutely horrible uh, about them for this summer split. But after NRG is when you maybe start feeling a little bit better, even though it's more one and two squads, although you weren't feeling great um, about 100 thieves in some of these matchups this weekend specifically that top top lane and bot lane they got super gapped across the board against team liquid and unfortunately we're kind of regressing to the quid and river show even in losses yes and i think that this is one of those things you got to keep track of with this 100 thieves is 100 thieves that overachieved last split compared to the expectations and what things were and then where the readjustment was going to be this split not only as far as whether you were going to regress what your progression all these type of things could be on that individual level you look at the rest of the league and what that picture changed and what the top level how that was going to change and what the requirements to meet that level of play is 100 thieves isn't quite there yet is the one thing that we have seen early on i'm not ready again to sell out to move on from this team and say that they won't get to that position where they can challenge at that top end of the lcs right now early indications some of these struggles seeing how much they have to rely upon river and quid being those stars to move them along and keep that momentum going that's where you realize 100 thieves is behind the ball even when you look at some of these midfield teams of the lcs especially as we're seeing this meta kind of shift back into ad carries being more of a focal point in a lot of these team comps, that was something that it felt like Meech and Ayla could kind of hide behind a little bit in spring. Not so much so uh, the case here, case in point, in that Team Liquid matchup. Dignitas ahead of them, which, listen, the marquee throwdown showdown of the week did not live up to the hype because FlyQuest absolutely dismantled Dignitas and five kills total 
Two turrets total in a best of three for Dignitas is a little bit anemic, so I get that it might seem high, putting them even at four. It does uh, a little bit, but it's still one of those ones where you check it against the competition and whether you'd rather throw them up ahead of them type of situation and where you find that confidence. And for me, the confidence is I've seen enough glimpses of this Dignitas team in the things that go right, even in the series that have gone wrong, that I know they're going to be that competition. They're going to be at that competitive level to challenge at this point is how I still feel about this Dignitas team. I know I think a couple of things that we saw this past weekend, especially in that FlyQuest series, maybe is an extension of some of the struggles we have seen for this team in scrims that has been talked about is one of those things to keep track of as well off, you know, from the main stage. What we can see, what you can bet on with this team, and I think one of the big reasons is, is that comparison to 100 Thieves. And I'm looking at that bottom lane, and I'm talking about Sven OG Niels. I think that he's still got it. He's waiting maybe kind of building some of that synergy with you know his support, building it with the rest of the team and how they operate and what is going on. I've got faith that he's going to be one of these guys that's popping off and creating some of that damage, some of that havoc for his his squad of Dignitas. And yeah, the silver lining for Dig. Now they've already played Cloud9 and FlyQuest, those two losses, and of course have that head-to-head -head win against 100 Thieves, which is the main reason why they're ahead of them in those standings. Uh, FlyQuest... Obviously, other side of it absolutely showed up and destroyed Dignitas across the board. The consistency continues to be there for Masu and Busio in the bot lane, and it was a much better series for Bwipo in the top lane. Yes, that is the impactful uh, play that you see from Bwipo, the reason why people were excited about this change coming in through for FlyQuest and what you were going to have for him to offer throughout this year. Him? Operating with Inspired at a high level, that was the big ticket to, to victory last split. That is still going to be the big ticket, even with the changes coming through for this FlyQuest team. Still want to see some more improvement, more flexing, a little bit more so of that power to get to where you can talk about them into the realm of a Team Liquid, of a Cloud9, the two squads that are no doubt ahead of them. Yeah, the two 3-0 and squads, and Team Liquid gets the bump to be the number one spot, mainly because they've had the harder schedule so far, obviously already taken on FlyQuest, 100 Thieves, whereas two of these three wins for Cloud9 coming against, you know, Shopify and Immortals. But no question, both have been incredibly dominant and leaps and bounds ahead of the competition and different play styles. You see Team Liquid has the most kills per game so far in the league, whereas Cloud9 have had some downright crazy passive low kill games, but objective control and macro sense they have the highest herald dragon and nash percentage in the entire league so really surprisingly the macro for cloud nine has been leading the way for them you want an example of the effect that reaper has on a squad look at those stats that you just laid out here for cloud nine where they're leading it what the macro things are going right for them and how they're able to build those advantages that is what you're seeing and that is a power change when you enter into this elite tier of the LCS occupied by Cloud9 and Team Liquid. I like Team Liquid ahead of Cloud9 at this point with that one, two type of situation only because of what I have seen from how Team Liquid has played out their games in this schedule. Cloud9, yes, it has been controlled. Yes, it has been at a higher level than everybody else. Not necessarily to the overwhelming degree that we have seen from Team Liquid. And as you mentioned, even still a stronger strength of schedule for Team Liquid, all things considered in this early part of the summer split. That's more than good enough for me to throw Team Liquid into that top spot of the LCS. And they got Dig on the docket, so the incredibly difficult schedule start for Dignitas uh, continues as they get the three hardest teams in the league in their first four matchups of the summer split. But yeah, TL and C9 both going to be looking to prove that they are leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of the LCS as summer continues. LEC, we got the finale of round one, round robin action in the summer split. And unfortunately, with the setup, how season finals works, that means it's the end for the two squads who will not be advancing to playoffs. And that is Rogue. And surprisingly, after a top four finish last split, Team Vitality. Obviously, this ended with some drama with a pair of tiebreakers. Mad Lions get one win for three and a half weeks, and then they rack up three wins on the final day to qualify for top eight. And not necessarily anything about those three wins is making you go, yep, Mad Lions are back. 
they are ready to roar through, be this unbelievable underdog through the playoffs and deliver like they did back in this in this in the early winter spring split. I don't think that's what's happening. Two wins here. against Rogue, one wins against Vitality. So Yes, that's the important thing to look at. And unfortunately, uh for the LEC faithful, Vitality and Rogue were abysmal this split and the way that things went out. I know Marcoon talked about it. He felt that Rogue improved a little bit and that everybody else just improved more. Brother, I don't even know if that's the way that I would have evaluated exactly what's gone on here for you guys this split. Extend that to Vitality. I think it's one of those ones where even more so than Rogue Vitality, you look at and you see players like Photon, like Karzy, and you liked what they did, what they offered, what they had, and the form that they were in this year. Everything else around them went so poor, and there does have to be some level of responsibility dished out to those players as well, knowing whatever you know, uh, pie it figures out to the slices from these players. But man, oh man, ugly look from those two. And man, they are taking a long vacation. July 2nd, they're, they're out of here. They're done for the year. Man, we ain't done until like late October, early November. And these guys are done already. Yeah, you're looking at basically a six month vacation for these squads. Obviously, Vitality, the way more egregious one, because this is a team that actually had expectations to not only make top eight, but make some noise in playoffs. Rogue, we were kind of expecting uh, to be a bottom squad. But uh, Mad Lions get a bump up to seven because despite it being wins against Rogue and Vitality, they did look good in those wins. El Yoya looked like an all-pro jungler again. And honestly, in a head-to-head -head against somebody like Giant X who has struggled at times, I'd give this version of MDK the slight edge. Yeah, it's, it's the slightest of edges when you're talking about at this point of the LEC, but I think you're right, and especially the momentum factor that is going to come through for this Mad Lions. Koi, if they can feel good, they can feel confident in their gameplay, you can start saying, hey, think back to spring. Think back to that winter split where things went right for us and how you were able to build on that. That's got to be the one for these Mad Lions, Koi, as you dig into this best of three scenario once again. El Yoya leading the charge, looking that clean and crisp in the jungle. That is the sign that you want to be seeing if you're the Mad Lions Corps. And maybe we know this is the, the strength, the loser's bracket miracle run for Mad Lions to miraculously qualify for Worlds. We're not quite there yet, but across the board, all five members absolutely stepped up when their backs were against the wall to close out uh, this Regular season action. Team Heretic still a spot ahead of them. They get a big win against Fnatic. They, you know, the G2 match, you can go one of two ways. You can go, wow, Heretics, what a competitive match against the two-time defending champs. Or you go, how did Heretics lose this game? I, I'm more so on how did Heretics lose this game is kind of how it played out and what you saw. I, they, they kind of fit into this right into the middle tier, right? Right in the comfortable middle zone of the middle tier of the LEC and what you've been going on right now. You have more confidence in them compared to, say, maybe a Mad Alliance coin. Maybe you're reevaluating that a bit with the momentum of MDK, but it's still just ahead of that type of territory. But certainly nothing impressing enough to dissuade or to dismantle who's ahead of them in the power rankings is the important thing more so for me. And... You know, G2 played that matchup very sloppily. The Mundo, absolutely disgusting, by the way. See, this guy goes down to like 15% health. Three seconds later with his ulti, uh, yeah, he's back to full. He had 107 stacks on a Sunfire and so much health. I can't believe it's actually taken this long for the meta of the top lane to be the way that it has been to see Mundo finally introduced in as one of these options to come through against these tanks certainly has the health regeneration and tankiness himself in that regard to stack up with the Skarners, with the Cassantes in that type of territory. And don't forget the percentage damage on those cleavers. That's absolutely going to be coming in handy if you're dealing with those guys up there. G2 seemed to make it work, seemed to, to find some stuff with it, even looking a little still out of sorts and sloppy compared to where you want or expect G2 to be able to be. Yeah, most definitely, especially when you talk about the top more top half of the LEC stepping up lately but uh before we get to that top four K Corp the bad that is Vitality and Rogue let's shout out Carmine Corp who picked up a win in their finale against Giant X and this team looks leaps and bounds better 
with this new look roster. We finally had a decent performance out of Kana in the top lane. And obviously, now that Zeri, Kaisa, these other more hyper carry picks are back in the meta, we're getting to see upset shine again. And baby, do I got to tell you, the blue wall entering into playoffs, that is going to be a scene for the LEC to deal with and have everything going on. Yes, sir. -y. Carmine Corp, welcome on to the show. Welcome to the LEC finally is something I think a lot of us can say at this point now that they've actually done some damage, are making some moves and going to be in a playoff type of scenario. Best of three. This is a situation where I'm looking at them and I'm looking at Carmine Corp. Kana, as you mentioned, having a great performance this weekend, upset getting into the right zone in the meta for him to be an impactful player. This is a Carmine Corp team that has made big improvements individually for the players that were already there, and then the additions coming on through to change and to bolster this team into where they can be in the LEC. That's all worked out. And I think as well, LEC's middle to bottom tier has slipped since the start of the year is the other way to evaluate this. So both of those actions working out, finds yourself Carmine Corp sitting right in the middle of the LEC power rank. Yeah, the gap between the top four and bottom six in the LEC has never been bigger for sure in this new format as that four spot is a now slumping fanatic in the playoffs. We were ready to see this team go nine and zero and something happened when they lost to G2 and broke their mental because back to back games this week, they did not look good. Humanoid is in peak regular season form, and by that I mean getting solo killed and caught out nonstop. You ever go for a bike ride and you change your gear and you just you, you hear it go wrong, and then you're still pedaling and the chain hasn't caught on to the next gear, so it's not quite going that type of scenario. That's how it felt watching Fnatic this whole last weekend because and they changed gear three, four times, but it was still not sounding so good. <laughs> Everyone was trying to do the same thing. You're still just trying to pedal your bike and, and steer, but nothing was working. None of it was creating that traction that you needed to get going. And that's the way that you look at this past weekend from Fnatic and really a lost opportunity to move into that better picture, to get that better head start in the best of scenario uh, that we're moving in towards is really the cost of finding yourself in this number four position as Fnatic. The win for them is... They're now opposite sides of the bracket of G2. So <laughs> maybe they're a little bit smarter than we even give them credit for. It's, it's the long con. It's the long con. They're planning it all along to give us El Clasico in the finals. Uh, obviously, if they return to that first two and a half weeks form, then they should be favorites to go deep in this playoff run. But they got to turn things around in these best of. At least they get a warm up kind of easier matchup against Giant X. But G2, even at seven and two, uh, we mentioned the sloppy win and even some of their wins before. A lot of these seven wins are sloppy, so it, it feels fair to put them in that three spot because BDS and SK deserve, obviously, the credit for eight and one regular seasons. If you throw in a best of five, G2 is still probably going to be a favorite against anybody, but based on regular season performances, you can't put G2 higher than three. G2 this split feels like going to like your favorite restaurant that has always delivered all these meals and it's always been great for you. And all of a sudden, uh, this whole stretch, you're eating there and you're like, this is just canned alphabet soup. What? This isn't the normal Italian homemade meal that I'm getting. Hey, chef's been on vacation. But you, you eat that alphabet soup and you're going, man, this sucks. This is not the restaurant meal that I knew and paid for or wanted here. But then you get that ice cold glass of water and you take that sip and it hits just crisp and refreshing like every time. That's G2's gameplay because it is something that you knew you should have gotten. This whole split is top level play from them. What you got, not top level play. You got barely passing grade type of play from them. But then you take that refreshing hit of going, oh, now we move into a best of three type of scenario. What am I expecting? You're expecting regular old G2 to come on through and be the reliable team that you can count on in playoffs. And, uh, I mean, G2, to, even if it's alpha, 
alphabetic soup. It doesn't matter because it's going to be entertaining whatever meal you get out of G2, even if it maybe isn't so pretty to eat or look at. It's still going to be entertaining, and we did get that. But Biff, give the credit where it's due for both BDS and SK for having incredible regular season runs. SK gets the slight nod as, well, they are the top seed, but also just even more dominant performances over the last couple of weeks. And unironically, I think you're putting Irrelevant and Rahel as maybe best in their role through this round robin stage. Talk about the whole variety on display on the buffet of the LEC standings. When you go through the bottom and you see how bad things have been for Vitality and Rogue, you find more so in this middle tier and you're kind of hanging out with Team Heretics and then, hey, Carmine Corp is up here now, all these type of things. Then you get to the other guys that you thought would be sitting at the head of the table with Fnatic and G2, and you're kind of questioning it. But then you look at BDS, and you're going, holy moly, lose. who's this pretty girl? That is BDS coming on through as the bell of the ball this split, looking fantastic and continuing the improvements that we have seen from them over the past couple of splits. It has been a steady trajectory of improvement for this squad, for these individual players. I think one of the aspects that we always talk about with BDS is how much the other four members can contribute, can be relied upon individually compared to someone like Adam in that top side, being that big threat, being big old, you know, I'm a beat you down type of, of dude in the top side. This split has been fantastic. The whole squad and how they've been able to manage and exceed expectations. And he's just a Skarner one trick now. Is Adam <laughs> on that top side? But uh, obviously... that doesn't that doesn't fit in the God's label, man. <laughs> uh, S for Skarner. You know, okay, we're, okay. We're, we're bumping plural, out the plural. set. Plural. We're bumping out the set in Scion, and we're throwing in uh, the Skarner in there. But <laughs> either way, obviously need SK and BDS to carry this fantastic regular season into playoffs. No reason to think they won't based on this period, previous body of work. But still going to be exciting when LAC playoffs do roll around. We'll see if G2 and Fnatic can level up. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thank you so much for hanging out. And we will catch you guys and gals on that flippity flip.